is when we see. Okay, the word of God is what we stand out on. We stand on the word of God in order for us to be obedient. Amen. 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 And let's talk about what else the word is. It says it is quick or living. Some some verses says quick. Other verses says living. The word of God is living. Anybody know what living is? Alive. Amen. Living. When we say something is living, what do we mean? Active. That's right. Amen. It's not dead. The word of God is alive. Amen. Is in a book. We read this, but through faith, the word of God is alive. Amen. The word of God is alive. Praise God. Hallelujah. The next part it says, the word of God is powerful. Anybody know what powerful means? And be stopped. That's good. What else? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all graduates. Look powerful me. <laughs> huh? Keep focused? Okay. Come on, y'all. Come on. Just, just in definition, what do you believe powerful is? Oh, yeah. Unstoppable. Right. Would you say very strong? Anybody? What you say? Open that corner. Open. What you say? Unstoppable? Okay. What you say? One more. Huh? Contains a lot of power. Amen? So the word of God is alive, is active, is living. Amen? The word of God has a heartbeat. Amen? That's how when we step into the word of God, we're actually stepping into something. Amen? We step into a realm that is totally different from the natural. The word of God is quick, living. It's powerful. I have having great strength having a strong effect on a person's feelings or thoughts. Powerful. Have a strong effect. Are y'all hearing me? Did you write that down? The word of God has a strong effect Hallelujah. on people. So it's living, it's powerful, and the next one it says, and it's sharper. Sharper or sharp. Does anybody know what sharp means? Right, that's right, that's right, huh? Precise, when something is sharp, would you say what you I'm thinking of Yeah, 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 very sharp, y'all know that? Somebody, so something, you know when someone sharpens a knife, you sharpen a knife to do what? To cut something? Yeah, well, you know, a knife don't cut it anyway, but when you sharpen it, what does it do? It makes it better. It makes it better. It makes it more effective. Amen? I have able to cut or pierce. When something is sharp, it's able to cut or pierce. Amen? It says that it is sharper, which means that it's greater than. Amen? So the Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? Anybody know what a two-edged sword is? A two-inch sword, y'all hear that? It's Say. different from a knife. Yes. Yeah. A knife has one side. It's almost like you can raise a blade. They have some that single-edged blades, but the dual edge meaning it's cut in either direction. That's right. That's right. In other words, it's a two-inch sword. It is it's sharp, it's evenly sharp on both ends. A two-edged sword. Amen. It effectively reaches each thing the same exact way. Sharp. Amen? So if I'm hitting from one side, I'm hitting you. I'm hitting from the other side, I'm hitting you the same as that way. Amen? I'm a, it's a two-edged sword. You can't even get away from me. It's going this and that. Amen? This way and that way. Amen? The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. 
It didn't say some two-edged swords. It said any two-edged sword. So bring them out. All the two-edged swords you have, the word of God says is sharper than that. Amen? You're not getting away from somebody too, too well with a two-edged sword. Amen? But it's also a metaphor, like a double-edged sword. You know, when people, it's almost like a, when people say something like, um, you're excellent for a beginner. You're excellent for a beginner. I hear them on both sides. You hear that? You're excellent for a beginner. I dealt with the good side and the bad side at the same time. It's all, it was almost like the person was standing there like, was that an insult or a compliment? You're excellent for a beginner. You hear that? Amen. Or it's almost like tourism. We walk up tourism or something like that. And it's like, okay, well, tourism is good for the economy, but it's bad for the environment. Double-edged sword. Amen. The Bible says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And this is why. Amen. It's so sharp, it's able to pierce the dividing of soul and spirit. Now we get now we're about to get into the supernatural part. Amen. This is what the word of God does for us spiritually. We just got in our mind what a two-edged sword is, right? And we got into our mind that the Bible says that it's sharper than what we know a two-edged sword to be. Greatly effective. Amen. It says it's so great. At the same time, it deals with soul and spirit. It is able to precisely separate soul and spirit to where there would be no confusion of what you operate in. Amen? You put the word upon your life, it's going to pierce soul and spirit right now, even though you're one body. It's able to penetrate that, that's precise. I like to think in, a nap, in my own mind that when we receive the word of God, like you're hearing the word of God right now, you're saying I accept the word of God, it's like you telling the word of God to get all in your business, because it will. Amen. Amen? The moment you begin to receive the word of God, it starts to sift you out, and it begins to get all in your business. And you're like fighting the word because you're like, the word is trying to tell you you're in the flesh. Amen? But you're like, I'm not in the flesh. Yes, you are. Every time you hit the word of God, it's piercing right in half to make you understand exactly what's in operation. Y'all hear that? Am I operating in my soul, my flesh? Y'all remember what we said our soul was? Our what? Our mind? Our will, what we want to do? Oh, and our emotions. Our intellect. What makes you you, in other words? Amen? It's able to pierce. It's sharp. The word of God does not play. It does not waste time. It quickly reveals to you what's in operation. Amen? Not only does it do that, but it says, and of joints and marrow. I love this part because anybody who knows anything about joints, we're talking about the bones, the ligaments, the things that bring us together. But what's inside that bone? The marrow. Amen? That's where the, fat, the fatty tissue is. That's where the red blood cells are, and the white blood cells, what makes you healthy in your bones. Amen? It says that the word is so sharp, it's able to penetrate to the marrow of the bone that's connected all together. Isn't that deep? In other words, in other words, the word of God is so powerful, it knows how to target right in to the part that makes you live. Y'all, you know that if you have healthy marrow, you won't have a healthy body? I hear about people having bone marrow transplants in order to live. That's the healthy part of your body that makes your bones do what it needs to do in a healthy way. Is that right? Amen. So in the spirit, when we apply the word of God, that's like God says, I'm going to get all into the marrow so I can make it healthy for you to live. Amen? Come on, y'all. I need y'all to hear that. But if you keep connecting yourself to the word of God, you're going to live because it nourishes you. The bone marrow is a nourishment of the bone, of the ligament. It keeps it alive and healthy. 
Y'all know what it means when people have sickle cell and all that stuff. That means their, their blood count, their cells aren't operating properly to the cellular, to the cellular level. Come on, the word of God brings us to what? Our cellular level. Brings us alive. We were once dead. Amen. The scripture talks about one of my favorite scriptures where he, when he asked the prophet about going to the valley of the dry bones. Y'all familiar with that? And he asked him, uh, son of God, son of man, he says, can these bones live? And it was an army basically just to hurry up with this. Um, it was an army of dry bones, dead bones. It was a valley of dry bones. And he was, God was speaking to the prophet. He was asking him, can these dry bones live? And he was like, I don't know, Lord. Only you know. But he kept asking him to where he was almost aggravated. But he said, speak the word of God. Speak the word, he said. And as he began to speak the word of God, the Bible says that the, the sinews and the ligaments and all that kind of stuff begin to come alive. I believe the word of God start dealing with the marrow, that part that brings the bones alive. And it start bringing alive until the end result where it said it was a mighty army standing. By the time he finished speaking the word of God. Are y'all hearing me? So there is, that the word of God is powerful. It's so sharp. We don't need anything else. Nothing else trumps the word of God. Amen? And here is my, this is my favorite one, y'all. This is my favorite one. And it says, it, it is a discerner of the very thoughts and intents of the heart. I love that part because if I stand on the word of God, and I apply the word of God to everything that I do, when people come around me, even, I'll just, I'll make it personal first. You know that the word of God, by his spirit, will begin to reveal to you your own motives? Your own motives. Because sometimes our motives are not pure. We have intentions that are selfish. Is that true? I want to go here, but it's for your benefit. It's not for somebody else's benefit. Most of the things that we do, we have to check it because it's for our own benefit. But sometimes our own benefit does not benefit the purpose of God at that time. Does that make sense? So sometimes I got to check my own motives. Help me, Lord, why am I doing this? Why am I asking that? Why am I calling her? Why am I calling him? Why am I going there? Why did I bring that up? Am I trying to get something from them? Or am I trying to get them to offer me money? Come on, y'all. Like, y'all like hear that? Yeah. Why did I say that to her? Was I saying it to her for her to respond back to me like that? Because I know if she responds back to me like that, then we can go, it's going to go somewhere. Amen? So not only would it reveal intentions of your own heart, people who come around you, the word of God will discern other people's motives around you. And you begin to say, wait a minute, why are you here? Why today? Why you call me at 10? Why? Y'all feel me? Why late at night? How come all the time we talk is late? <laughs> you understand? Y'all feel what I'm saying? And see, it, the word of God is going to do what it's going to do. The reason why it's not effective is because of who? Right, the individual. Y'all hear that? We can deny the truth, still not going to stop the word from being in operation because it's doing what it's supposed to do. See, God is not going to stop doing what he's supposed to do because we stop him from wanting to do it. We just don't delay our purpose. You delay. God doesn't lie, we do. God doesn't forfeit our purpose, we do. God doesn't prolong us. We prolong ourselves. Because we are a righteous man. Does that make sense? We are righteous in him. So therefore, if he's given us the inheritance to walk in the blessings and the power of his word, if we're not walking in it, whose fault is it? It's our fault. So y'all, I, I would encourage you to really just write these things down and just really study it 
and apply to your everyday because you're going to begin to see it operating in your life more vividly. Think about it. Where were you maybe two months ago? In your mind? In relationships with people? Think about it. Maybe a, a whole month ago, maybe two, as opposed to right now, you're sitting here receiving a word. What do you think took place? What do you think was taking place when you first came and sat down and heard the word? He was like, I like that word, like that's a good look. I like that, I like that. <laughs> y'all, y'all so funny with those things. Amen. But you said, wait a minute, I think I want to go back. Then you said, I think I want to go back. That word was good. It kind of convicted me a bit. But I want to go back. Is that anybody here? <laughs> what makes you come back is not because we're so good, y'all. The Bible says, in our flesh dwells no good thing. We are all prone to mess up big time. All of us. Every day. Y'all say every day. <laughs> every day. But it is the word of God by way of the spirit that starts to pierce us and cut on us and get to those parts of us that you can't naturally see. And he begins to put nourishment in us. He begins to bring the life of the word in us. The Bible says it's quick, it's living, it has a heartbeat. It brings death to life. But it also cuts. I like to say the word of God cuts you and repairs you at the same time. He's so loving, you gonna get cut, you gonna get cut. But while you getting cut, the other edge of the sword is repairing you at the same time. Like a two-edged sword, I'm, I'm getting you from both ends at the same time. Y'all hear that? So I would encourage y'all to hold on to this and we're gonna ask a couple questions, oh Lord. Um, we're going to ask a couple questions or, or a few statements if y'all will, comments or whatever. Um, but I would encourage y'all to think about that. What makes your prayer powerful if you don't know the word? What makes your prayer powerful if you don't even know you're a righteous man because you don't know the word? What makes you know that your prayers benefit much? If you don't know what God is saying about it. What makes you bowing down, getting on your knees real, if you don't believe it? Does that make sense? See, people walk away because they don't understand what's at work in the process, so they jump out their process and say, all that Christian stuff ain't for me. Because God is trying to take us out of religion into true, authentic relationship with the demonstration of his power. Don't y'all want the demonstration of his power or do y'all just want to waste time? Do y'all want to just go to church on Sunday and do the religious thing and put your little $2 in an in a offering envelope just like they did back in the past because it was religious? Or do you want power? Do you want to change? Do you want to be proven that, okay, I can remember a time that when I was uh, coming into this thing and I was, Young adult, and I think I told this story before, but I felt like I was too young to be serving the Lord. I was 20 something years old. Nobody my age ain't doing this. And I decided I wanted to go back into the world a little bit because everybody my age ain't doing this. Not serious like this. Well, how many know that was the first deception of the enemy? How many know that was the first? First thing he put in my ear, ain't nobody out here you 20 something years old. Wait till you 30. That's where everybody you go to church with 30 something. That's why he's serving the Lord. He, you know, he starts to convince you in your mind that everybody else ain't doing this. And before you know it, you find yourself back at a place. But I love how God is. He's so authentic and so powerful because we talked about how piercing his word is. I remember going to a club that we used to go to when I was going to college. 
and I remember being there and seeing all the people that I used to hang with, they were there, you know, even the DJ. And I can remember, I was standing there because I knew him, um, afterwards I was standing behind the booth at, uh, in the club. So he said, after it was over, he said, so why are you here? He said, why are you here? And I was like, what you mean? Like dancing, you know? <laughs> I didn't understand. But quickly, even in that moment, Holy Spirit spoke to me. And it was as if that DJ turned into the Lord himself. And he was asking me, what are you doing here? I got it. I got right back where I needed to be. Because God was saying, this is not the place for you anymore. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So in order to change from a life of sin or a life of all that stuff or even understand who's talking to you right now, is it God or the enemy? It's based on the word of God and by his spirit that would allow this thing that we're doing right here to be real and not some figment of our imagination even when we get weary. Because Black Sister Alice said, yeah, we get tired. We get weary in the battle. It hurts. A lot of times we get so cut and so hurt, you want to say, it ain't worth it. But then all of a sudden, that word of God just gets rejuvenated and reminds me, where you going to? What you going back to? Ain't nothing back there. So I want to encourage y'all, ain't nothing back there. I know it looks like stuff is back there. But it's a facade, y'all, because once the enemy gets you back where he wanted you to be, then the enemy gonna show his ugly face. And I'm telling you, demons are not cute. They are not that pretty girl that, that was being used as a vessel to get you back where you were, or that young man, or that alcohol, or that whatever. Y'all hear me? So I really want y'all to apply these things that we're teaching and apply it because it's real. And you and keep living. You're gonna find out how real it is. Amen? So real quickly, y'all, anybody?